Hi, today is, um, let's see, what day is it? Put on my blonde hat. I'm Brittany, and this is my vlog. Yeah, so, um, hopefully you're here on purpose. And today is June 8th. Um, I'm hallucinating. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just being me. Um, t uh, this video is, um, I don't want to say it's a ramble, but I want to say that it is a bit of a collection of experiences and I'm going to start with a quote from phone. I'm going to start with a quote from uh, one of my viewers and this is from her. So I'm going to read you exactly what she said and um, before I do, I'm just going to tell you that conceptually this this video is about it's an ongoing part of what I would say uh, subject wise is learning to live your life as the new you doing whatever it is you do um, you know uh, I would think some people would have issue with this saying this you know this is frivolous it's a waste of time it's but the fact is is that transition is just, uh, I don't know, it's a composition of physical preparation and the mental preparation for just living the rest of your life as a new, as a new you. So when I talk about like just how this sort of translates into real world experiences and uh, you know, if you listen carefully, you might hear stuff that, that's going to benefit you. So, okay, so he, here's what she said. Uh, this viewer is from California, and if she's watching, she knows who she is because she'll recognize what she said. I think the most important advice you can give any transgender woman is that you are your target gender now, no matter what you look like. So just be yourself now. Okay, that's what she said. So, um, today was laser hair removal and electrolysis day. I haven't been for, I don't know, say a month or something. Um, they have a couple of other transgender patients, but my relationship uh, all the relationships that I have there are with biological women and whatever guys I know there. Excuse me. And, you know, um, as important it is to build relationships with transgender girls, uh, it's way more important to build them with females. You know, um, when you're thinking about what aspects of being a woman you want to emulate, uh, I, th I think being graceful under fire is one. So, you know, when you see things or you hear things, uh, or you're part of a, a conversation that is kind of um, not something you would expect, um, and you're there because they see you as a woman. Um, there is all of that, and you want to do a lot more listening than talking. Uh, I was in the salon today, and I saw uh, one stylist, a very beautiful woman, you know, she, she was the literally the victim of someone else in a salon who was abusing her and she was really upset and crying and everything and I kind of stayed out of it for a long time but because I was lingering after my session until some of the swelling went down um, I bring 5% uh, hydrocortisone what you get in the store is I don't know, uh, whatever you get, this is prescription, but it works really good. So, 5% hydrocortisone lotion, you can get it from your dermatologist, I'd bring it. It, it. it reduces so much of the redness and stuff, like, in no time. 
um, they were all done talking to her and she was really crying. I think she actually got physically throttled by the neck or like pinched real hard by some other woman in there. I mean, women can be very aggressive. Never, never believe that just because it's a female it doesn't mean that um, things can happen physically. Always be on your guard. Uh, don't ever assume anything about humans. They'll surprise you at every turn. Uh, I don't know, I said something to her, you know, and I don't regret it. I just, you know, like, you know, don't worry. I said the only person that you can control is yourself. And she was just hell-bent on revenge and being upset, so she really wasn't paying too much attention, but the message is correct. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not having any problem, really. I, I haven't, have I been clocked, probably? Do I care? No. <laughs> zero. <laughs> That's a big zero. I don't care. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to talk about someone else's kid child for a second without saying who they are. This child, unfortunately, is mentally disabled. Now, the father says that whenever he's out with the child, that they are the point of an enormous amount of attention, finger pointing. Uh, I, I can't say what else. I wasn't there. I, I'm interested in talking to the guy because he's the son of, of, of a friend of mine and I'm really curious. And you want to get involved in people's lives, you know, don't don't hide. I, I always say that don't hide. Get the socializing aspect of being a woman and being involved in, and caring about your friends and stuff. This is a really important element of it. You know, it's it's grace, it's caring, it's being well put together. It's it's a lot of stuff. Uh, don't ever let anybody tell you that being a female is easy because it's not. But uh, as I know, because this is my second transition, for those of you who haven't heard this before, it is. One of the things that I took back from me as a pivotal piece of knowledge as to what it is to be a woman, regardless of whether you were born as one or you just feel like you have been one your whole life like us, is that being a woman or being a guy is not better, one is not better than the other. It's, it's a matter of choice as to how you prefer to live your life. You know, I know when I rolled, when I used to like get up, yeah, that's what I want to say. When I would look in the mirror and I would see back this guy's face in the mirror, I'd be like, ugh. No, you know, and it, it, it really didn't, it didn't make me happy. It never made me happy. Now when I look in the mirror, I, I, I haven't been this happy in a long time. Many, many years. I like doing my, make, doing my makeup. I don't care about the extra time and stuff, you know, and all that. And I'm enjoying myself, and as you can see, the purse over there, that's one of my acquisitions. Um, unless somebody asks about it, I'm not going to sort of showcase it. Uh, I'll just tell you that it's a nice bag from Coach. Uh, it's black patent leather. Uh, it is uh, genuine and it is it is a good, what I would call, investment purchase as a bag. I mean, you can buy like 20, 50 bags or whatever, and they're all kind of sort of like in their own fringe as to what you can use them for, but black patent leather, that's a shoulder bag, uh, is a highly, highly flexible bag, daytime or night. Um, now, back to this guy and his kid. I'm just sort of get off the track because I let you think about this stuff for a second. You know, these people who have special ed kids, uh, or I'm gonna say stuff people aren't gonna want to hear. So if, if you're really sensitive, you better like turn the volume off for a second. You know, if, if you know of anybody who has suffered an amputation from from diabetes, or we're talking about disfigurement from fire, 
uh, or um, thermal burns, uh, chemical burns, or all kinds of stuff. We are all in our own proverbial cages or pens in that very same human zoo that transgender is and is known to be and is demonstrated by people staring at us and saying whatever they say to us as they did about this guy's mentally handicapped kid who I'm sure is a good kid, he's not a homicidal maniac or anything but just because he is what he is he is another zoo exhibit. So, what does this all mean? It means that we're not the only ones. And for those of you who were depressed because you thought somebody was singling you out, uh, A, yes they are. And B, if you gotta get singled out, be, be singled out for something you want it, you wanna be, and what you wanna be singled out for. You know, uh, you could be singled out for being a, a very good dresser, and if that's the case, like I talk about the woman in the red dress and the black sling back high heels, you're gonna be, you're also in the human zoo, you know? You're, you're a special case for the moment, and people are gonna pay you extra attention. I, I don't, I don't think twice about it, I was in a salon today. I took time to um, go to the workstation where where my hair, my hair stylist and my and my colorist works hadn't gotten in yet. I grabbed something uh, off his counter with the permission of one of the other people that was there to try to do something about the awful humidity. Um, a leave-in a leave-in conditioner product, and you know, I you know you have a nice conversation with with her, you know, and. You want to have conversations where you can. Um, don't be shy. You know, people who are not transgender, which is like basically everyone else, like 99.999, the five nines, okay? They have their own issues. A lot of them are very um, uh, introverted. They don't socialize well. Don't be one of those people. I'm quite the opposite. Although I can stay quiet, and it's more about my voice. Went to the salon, had a nice chat, and when you chat people up, you never know what they're going to do for you. Before I walked out of there, I had, I had a new mascara comb that one of the ladies had given me because I told her that I was getting ready to buy one. She's like, no, I have an extra, and she gave it to me. Gave me three quarters of a dozen lipsticks that she didn't particularly like, that were all good. All you need is a lip brush to get them out. And, you know, I'll sort through them. Nice. A couple other products, including one from Lancome. Uh, it's all free, you know. It's just for being a good person, being a client, um, being appreciative of other people's services, giving her a hug after she's done with me, you know, and telling her that she's appreciated and that she does great work and you're grateful for her. And trust me, you may think that your transition is just about you, but it's not. All those people out there who service provide to you, whether it's your colorist, or the person who cuts your hair, or does your electrolysis slash your laser hair removal, or gives you good recommendations at the beauty supply store, or at the clothing store, or this, that, and the other. All these people, they are on your side. Yes, they are in the business to make you money. But you should appreciate them and you should say something to them along the way and say, listen, I just want to thank you for all your good suggestions. Um, it's been really helpful. Because they're helping you and they're making you a success. It's not just you. No one is an island unto themselves. Um, I stayed a long time. I stayed like three hours. I had a session that was 90 minutes. A lot of it was just, you know, just commiserating and I don't know, just screwing around, you know, and talking and stuff, and it does, it's nice, and, and you should take those opportunities to be social where you can. I left, uh, you know, for those of you who are shopping, and you're still sort of migrating from one body type to the other, uh, as if you didn't know already, you should definitely visit thrift shops, 
such as Salvation Army, such as Goodwill, and some of these others. A uh, couple of things. Number one, and these are tips of your, if you're sort of paying attention, do really pay attention now and consider writing this stuff down. It actually is going to help you. Um, at some point, I am going to start uh, talking about some of the stuff that I buy for beauty products in sort of a generic way to say, hey, you know, uh, for those of you who haven't had long hair all your lives and now do, it requires special care and this is the kind of stuff you want to have by category in, in your uh, bathroom. And we'll talk about that stuff. I think I'm going to be doing that soon. And if there are any of you out there who want to contribute what you think uh, any anyone should have. Uh, obviously, I have brown hair with red highlights, basically auburn. You know, if you want to talk about what what blondes might typically want to have in their bathroom or something like this. I think among the things that a blonde wants is vinegar, like apple cider vinegar or something, to occasionally rinse her hair with vinegar because it tends to, it keeps the color very true. Um, and there are special precautions like if you swim in chlorinated pools and things like this, unless of course you like green hair, which is a reaction with the chlorine. Um, so. Once I left, I went to Salvation Army. I actually, uh, you know, right now I'm sort my radar is up looking for shorts, like cute shorts. So I'm going to show you, um, like these. See that? See that stomach? That's hard work. Although I have to admit, I gained a couple pounds. So those of you who who like me might love chocolate, you are forewarned. Uh, you are basically uh, screwing yourself royally by eating chocolate. I eat too much chocolate. I, I'm, you know, I, I, I got on the scale, I gained like three pounds. But I can knock it off pretty fast too, so. Uh, while well, I was at Salvation Army and the tips are coming in a second, I, I did buy about three pair of shorts. Now, uh, typical experience on a Saturday, is uh, it's 25% off depending on location. Wednesday is usually 50% off, off tag. Go there, dress like this. Put on your underwear, put on a pair of like running shorts over that, and then put on, put on a skirt, a skirt, a pair of pants, or like I just showed you those shorts I had over your running shorts. Make sure the running shorts are fairly snug. You can also wear um, aerobics sh like shorts. I have boy shorts that have like a three and a half inch inseam. You can wear that over your underwear. Now why would you do this? Because if you're trying on something simple like a skirt, a skirt, shorts, uh, something like this, and if you wear a tight tank over your bra, you could even try on a dress without even going into the ladies, the ladies changing room. Now, for those of you who don't have, I can't resist, for those of you who don't have the balls to do this, okay, um, you should probably look in the glass jar that's on your, above your fireplace, on your mantle, haha, -ha, I just, <laughs> okay, but, um, like me, I just, uh, now, if I tell you something here, I don't bullshit, so I'll tell you, tell you square, okay? I set my purse down on the end of a clothing rack, so I just hooked it on uh, the handle on the rack. I took, I, I flipped my, my flip-flops off, they're on the floor. I took, I took my shorts off right there in the middle of the, of the floor, set them up on the clothing rack, and grabbed the three shorts that I had set to try on right there and started putting them on. Boom, 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 tried them on. And um, actually I got three for three, which is like amazing. Don't always go on a Wednesday when they have the great sales because a lot of times people will clean things out and uh, you'll get zero even though you try to save that extra buck. Uh, so, you know, to me it's way good enough to get 
three pair of nice denim shorts. They're not flawless. If I wanted flawless, I, I would be in Ann Taylor or something or, or whatever. That's not what this is. This is just, you know, knock around stuff, fun stuff, cute stuff, sexy stuff. If you have kick ass legs, like I do, and do tweet your horn if you do have a nice feature. You want to show it off. That's what being a woman is, you know? Uh, just find one feature that you want to advertise, but don't, you know, don't. For example, if you have a great legs, you can wear something short, but don't show a lot of cleavage that same day or you're going to look like a slut. Bottom line, okay? Warrant. Uh, or too much, too much cleavage, too much cleavage, something, you know, just be smart. One, eye, one thing, one feature only. Uh, so I walked out of spending less than nine dollars on three pairs of shorts. If you don't want something, if you're going to put it back on the rack, check the pockets before you put it back. You never know if somebody left money in the pocket, and that money is yours. Don't advertise that you found money, just take it. Uh, of course, you can always make a donation to Salvation Army. That would probably be the right thing to do. When you take them home, make sure you wash everything you buy, even if it's brand new with the tags, before you wear it for the first time. You don't know how it was stored. You don't know where it was stored. You don't know who the hell has touched it or what it's been subject to, what environment or anything else but what has gotten on it, because you can't smell it, doesn't mean that something isn't on that fabric. So you are forewarned to wash it. I'm washing them in warm water. I don't, you know, that's what you want to wash it. Um, left there, went to Sally's, Sally Beauty Supply. And for those of you who've never been to Sally, uh, spend the $3 or something, I don't know what it is, for a year membership. You get like... Uh, about 10% off at least, and I think up to 30% off stuff. Uh, they supposedly have a great top coat for their nail polish there, and I, I'm looking at it. I use Sesh Vite, which is very good, but I have a predictable problem, which means I know that every time I use Sesh Vite, I'm going to have this issue. That's a predictable problem. It's repeatable. It's empirically tested. It's like every time I do it, it's the same thing. Whoa, well, what happens? Yeah, it dries fast, but it tends to make the polish underneath it chip. It chip quick. So if you got a date and you got to get out the door and you want it to look like amazing, fine, put such feet on it, but you're warned, uh, it's probably not going to last long. Now, this is a really dark color. See that? It's really dark. Uh, it's, uh, it's OPI. It's called Midnight Moscow. Midnight Moscow by OPI. To me, it looks like a brown with metallic in it. It's really pretty. Uh, it's definitely my speed. I didn't think I was going to like darks, but I do. Um, so, they actually have a generic line in there. And, you know, talking to the woman there and not, once again, not hiding and trying to pretend that no one can see me and that, no, I'm not six foot one in high heels and you know, in the meantime, the one behind the counter is is five foot two, and she's in heels. Okay, you are not going to be a female ever, ever, ever. You might as well just if you're not comfortable with how you look physically, whether it's stature, which is height, or shoulders, like you seem, you know, or something. Uh, if you can't change it, then just deal with it because it's not going to change no matter how hard you wish. Um, so, you know, I engaged her and I was talking to her and she's like, oh yeah, you know, um, you know, if you get the membership, you get 10% off and this and that. Next thing I know, I have, I have like, so I ha you know, I got Inf Infusium 23, which is a leave-in conditioner in, in a big one liter bottle, 33.8 ounces. They have a four dollar coupon thing running right now. The damn stuff cost me less than four bucks, about four bucks with tax. And then this other stuff that, which is like they're generic, but it's like equivalent to name brand in this case, 
It's a leave-in conditioner. I think it's called The Conditioner or something from Paul Mitchell. Uh, and that was like another six dollars. And, you know, so you want to look at their generic line. They usually throw that stuff in the back of the store. Why? Because it's low margin. Always look in the back of the store to see what else is going on. I don't know. Just other stuff. You know, ran some other errands. Uh, went to the Italian bakery and stuff and the Italian, Italian grocery. And, and, you know, I like it hot. Can't you tell? Uh, got some, you know, hot peppers and stuff. And... You know, the guys that you see in those places and stuff, I just, I have to admit, to some degree, I kind of like avoid them because I don't want to engage with them. I don't want them hearing my voice. This is something I can own up to. I will admit this. And it's fine. It's got to change. Uh, I'm dealing with it. I think the fact that you can admit it, if you don't already, will probably keep you more emotionally balanced while you wait. Uh, and I am going to get surgery on this, and, and I'll document this pretty carefully when I go so that you all can see this up close because this procedure is going to be done 10,000 miles that way in Seoul, South Korea. So, uh, uh, great clinic. And, and for those of you who, who want the information, watch my video about screaming at the top of your lungs. Obviously, it's just a play on words. Um, it's all about your voice and stuff, and um, you want to watch it. It's heavily, it has, it's heavily laden with information, and there's a lot of um, information that's on the screen that you can, uh, you can write down too that I put up on the screen. Uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, I have other stuff to do, but it's like more of the same. And at the end of the day, here's what it all means. It means that I no longer have this like knot in my stomach, this sort of like emotional, like I'm all. Oh, I got a towel. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna use a prop. You know this sort of like ringing thing going on here, you know, in my head or in my stomach because. I'm all wound up. That's over. Don't let anyone throw you off your game. I don't give a shit who they are. They got nothing on you. They are just as fucked up as you are. They may not be transgender, but they are just as effed up as you ever thought you might have been or ever will be. Okay? So, I hope that helps. And I'm going to... For the benefit of those of you who were sleeping at the helm when I said what I said at the beginning of this video about the quote from my viewer, I'm going to say it again because it's worth repeating. Okay, so here she says, quote, I think the most important advice to give any transgender woman is that you are your target gender now no matter what you look like, so be yourself now. End of quote. Alright? Think about it. Make it your own. Because... It's, it's you know, whatever you feel in your head, whatever is getting you, wherever you are being held up emotionally, you gotta stop. Um, and I'm getting a little bit emotionally wound up just thinking about it because I realize how far I've come. Uh, what's coming up next week? Wednesday, I have uh, another breast augmentation consult. It's down in Miami. And um, don't particularly know this surgeon by rep. Uh, saw their ads, killer price. Uh, you know, we're going to see. And so, if this is something I want to discuss, then I'll move forward talking about it in a video. Price is amazing. How's the quality? Don't know. Uh, experience with the office staff so far is great. When you pick a doctor, make sure you pick wisely. Know what your criteria is. Okay. 
you, you should be looking at everything. If they can't justify a high price, then you take them to task and ex have them explain to you in detail why it's so high. I talked to the first doctor. I didn't like what he had to say. You're talking to me about the cost of the hospital and if I have large implants, I'm going to be on the table twice as long. The fees are higher, blah, 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 blah. Well, the fee he told me when I first asked him was this. Then I see him advertising another price, which is even lower than that. When I actually went in and got the consult, it was... Now, if, in case you think I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm like double talking or, or like I'm not meaning to say this, I actually am. He actually was quoting me essentially double what he told me in an email. And we're talking about thousands of dollars. Uh, okay, this is enough to piss off anybody, okay, and to get their, their bullshit meter pegged on the right hand side in, in the red zone, okay. So, um, you are warned. Be very careful. I, I'll talk more about this doctor when I, you know, this is going to be a strong candidate for me with breast augmentation. I guess that's it for now. So. For those of you who are now full-time, work towards it. Uh, for those of you who are now full-time and working towards it, make sure that you always look appropriate for where you're going. Do your best not to be out of place. I know you want to show off what you bought this side or the other. You know, uh, I'll give you a, some clue about what not to do. Just one thing. If you have a nice bag like that one, and by the way, I got that on auction off of eBay and basically paid I don't know, about 30 cents on the dollar of what retail is. Retail is close to $400. Guaranteed, and I've already had it authenticated. And if you do buy something like this off of eBay, get it authenticated locally, okay? So that you can ensure that if it was not authentic, you can return it via PayPal's guarantee, okay? And you take, you know, basically argue with the guy that this is not authentic, and, and you fight with PayPal, and you get your money back. If he's selling you, if they're selling you, um, fake, fake merchandise. If you're gonna have a nice piece like that, don't wear like kick-ass nice shoes to go with it. Why? Because if you look like you're wearing all your nice Sunday clothes, people are gonna look at you. Just pick up something nice. As a, as a centerpiece to your outfit, like really, really nice, you know, that that's like one tip I'll give you right now, okay? Uh, yeah, that, that's that's a good one. Okay, jewelry, it, it, if you wear like a number of pieces of jewelry, and I do, I wear a bracelet, I wear a, a finer bracelet here, uh, I am wearing a necklace, relatively simple, stainless, this is stainless steel, this is uh, sterling uh, and nothing nothing on the feet, no no ankle bracelets, which, which I have. Just be careful you balance yourself out, you don't look like you just robbed uh, the jewelry counter at Macy's. Don't, don't overdo it, okay, so. Thanks for watching. I hope this long ass video is going to teach you something. Uh, I do know they're long, uh, but uh, I could argue also that you're, you, this is a good investment of time, you're worth it. Uh, if you have to watch it in pieces, you watch it in pieces, who cares? Alright, take care, bye, have a great day.